road, it looks all the same. And if you're looking at that back there compared to this, same seed rate, same day, different circumstances. This is significantly better. So what we've done here, um, unsure of what seed rate we should should attempt when being a first year bioactive user, um, we tried our conventional method of uh, about a bushel per acre on the far end of the trial plot here. Um, brought it about 30 acres this way, did another plot at 90 pounds, so a bushel and a half. Um, next plot was 110 pounds, and that's what I planted most of the farm at, was about 110 and uh, also finished off with a, a plot of 125 uh, just to compare a little more and a little less and it was a little bit shriveled and small seed uh, so I believe that in bushels and actual seed rate we we've got a higher population than than what it would normally be with normal good sized plump seed um, and what we're finding is that on the for when you drive by it looks all similar from the road it doesn't look like it's double on one end and, and normal on the other. It looks very uh, very uniform throughout, but once we get out here and count the heads and the actual uh, plants per foot, it's uh, the 60, 60 pound has pretty good heads, but very few plants per foot. We go it to the 90 and it's, it's more heads and uh, just a little bit smaller head. The 110 has a lot of really good sized heads. The most, uh, the most count you get to the 125, and not really more more heads, but the heads are smaller. And so uh, yield wise, I, I, I still believe our 110, maybe somewhere around that 100 mark might have been better with this size of seed, but I, I think that will be our, our best yielder, but we'll know in about a month. I think it should tell the, tell the whole story, so we'll see. This is um, fertilized wheat. Dan's uh, brother Dave, and so side by side, they're using half the farm with fertilizer and half the farm with uh, bioactive. Um, just as an example, this is seeded at a, a lower seed rate, so probably around 60 pounds, six to 70. So it would be around a bushel, just over a bushel, a bushel and a quarter. And what I see is that we don't have enough. Uh, thick stands. The, the plants are relying on stooling, but still there's not enough um, stalks. There's probably about, um, at the best, about 20 um, stalks per foot where we have 40. So you have to have a lot of, a lot of heads uh, to create your bushels, and if you're lacking in, in, in heads out there, uh, they would have to, you know, um, produce a lot more seed per head to, to be equal in bushels. So if you just have 20 heads compared to 40, we have a lot more potential to um, take advantage of big rains if that does happen. But if you look at the, if you just take the camera and look down at the at the rows and the way the plants are, they're they're not in a thick row. Uh, wheat likes to to be planted in a, a a lot of companions because you get the odd little plant that's like this. It's just a very small dwarf, and you know you'd think wheat would do better by itself but it does very poorly so even with fertilizer I see that people are cutting the seed rate back and putting on more fertilizer which is the wrong direction I want the plants to to be thick and uh, interacting with the environment and driving the roots down deep and uh, allowing that plant to use the Sun's energy instead of the energy of fertilizer so Wheat needs companionship. If you go to, there's not one dwarf plant in this row, but you go to anyone's field in this whole area, 
that's using, you know, what are you using, a bushel to plant with? Eight, well, 75, 80 pounds. Yeah, so just over a bushel and a quarter or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll go along and you'll see that your air seeder can't deliver the seed consistently. And you'll have a clump and then you'll have one plant. And that one plant is doing very poorly. And so with exhaust, definitely, we have to have a high seed rate so they help each other drive the roots down and that's my energy. The, the, the carbohydrates of the seed is my fertilizer. And that's what gives the power to drive down the roots and to have sugars in that soil to, to attract all the microbial life to run this whole thing. So it's different. It's hard to yeah. make sense of it, if, you know, at first. It's, yep. it's and, a totally and different and way of thinking about how we grow this. And you can't compare so easily. Is there, they're doing a cocktail of difference to you. They've got a different cedar. Yep. They're planting a different time putting out fertilizer. Got probably different genetics. So there's many things that are going on that um, are hard to really put your finger on which one is better. A and I guess personally you have to weigh it out the risk and and your climate and your you know farming practice. And really I would tend towards um, minimum tillage, higher seed rates and closed row spacing so you don't have weeds coming in the middle of the rows. You guys ever listen to Keith Burns's carbonomics talk that he's got on YouTube? He talks about those free living nitrogen or fixing bacteria, and they're called associative diazotrophs. And he says they can make, they can, you know, if the plant's empowered to do so, it can make, uh, they, they can get nitrogen for a corn plant or a weed or whatever. But uh, if you feed it and give it a synthetic right in furrow, it doesn't need it. It shuts off that communication. It doesn't feed sugars off its roots, and uh, it shuts down that pathway. And so, once you've used up your fertilizer, you yeah, and that's why your fertilized crops are testing lower in nitrogen in the tissues because that system is not there to make more nitrogen today. This this crop is making nitrogen for itself to make its own protein. 